Hey everybody, welcome to this webinar on the new big changes with your LinkedIn account. And um, if you haven't logged into LinkedIn lately, there's all kinds of new stuff to know and do. And so just to give you a little background on me, I am an author, speaker, and online strategist. And this is my new LinkedIn profile. This is kind of what it looks like. We're gonna dig into that a little bit so you guys can kind of learn a little bit more about that. And uh, I call myself a online strategist because the biggest thing that I do is, you know, I don't just set things up for people. It's not just done for you services. It's really my job is to teach you guys how to utilize this so that you get the return on investment and can repeat it over and over and over again. And my my um, tagline is, is I show you why, you know, why do you need to do this? And I teach you how. And one of my friend always jokes at networking meetings, you know, he comes up and gets everybody in the room to stand up and say strategist. So I went to Wikipedia and looked up strategist or uh, just the dictionary. And a strategist is a person skilled in planning action or policy, especially in war and politics. And I'm here to tell you, I'm not into war and I'm not into politics. I'm here to make friends, not war. And that's what a lot of this stuff is about. All right. It's about how do we utilize social media? How do we use online marketing to make friends, to build connections, to build authentic relationships so that we can grow our businesses? So LinkedIn was launched on May 5th, 2003. And as you can see by my profile, I have been a member since February 22nd, 2004. And I was one of the first thousand people I'm pretty certain that were on LinkedIn. There weren't a lot of people that kind of dug into it because nobody knew it existed. Um, but nowadays, there are 486 million accounts. Now, 108 or 106 million of those are active, meaning that people are on there on a regular basis. And so that's something very, very important. But keep in mind, out of 486 million and 106, um, they're all over the world. So the key thing that you've got to figure out is how are you going to connect with people in the industry that you want to talk to that potentially are going to be good referral sources or purchasers of your products and services? And that's what we're going to be talking about today. Now, I've been asked a lot, what is your superpower? My superpower is teaching. And that's the one thing that I've done very, very well. I'm an adjunct professor. I teach at a bunch of universities. Uh, both live and via Skype. As you can see, there's me in my golf hat and my golf clothes because I just got done golfing and came back and was teaching a class at Central Washington University on social media. So that's the thing I love to do. It's the thing I do the best is teach people to use online technologies to grow their business. And I often say that I translate geek into English. That is my superpower. So before we get started, I want to ask you a question. Do you guys know what your average client is worth, all right, or your average customer? So what's the average value of a new client if you get a new client? So in my world, my initial average client range is anywhere from $5 to $20 to $20,000. But if I sat down and looked at my QuickBooks, I noticed that it's the initial consultation, initial thing that I do is worth about $1,000, um, no matter what I'm doing for them, teaching, training, so on and so forth. If I give a speech, you know, it's usually that's what I end up making. That's still a client talking to a whole group of people. Um, over the lifetime, if I have a consistent client that's working with me, uh, generally it tends to be about $5,000 over the course of a lifetime. So. The question is, is what if you could get three to five new clients? And what if you could do that every single month? All right. How would your life be different? What would your status be? Could you spend more time with your family? Could you work less, not work harder in your business, but work smarter in your business? Could you afford a little bit of help? Uh, one of the things that I do is I hire virtual assistants and they help me take care of a lot of different things. So when I go in using LinkedIn, I'm looking at it saying, okay, 
if I can get a connection from somebody, whether it is a direct connection that they're going to buy something or if it's a referral source, you know, this is what I'm looking at is every time I make one of those connections, how can I increase my monthly income by, you know, three to five thousand dollars per month? And I've seen it happen and I've seen it happen for a lot of my clients, too. It's worked for me. It's worked for them. And one of the things that I try to do is I'm one of those people that do it for myself first, and I've seen the returns. And believe me, my business has really skyrocketed over the last three, four years, especially since I've written my books and I've gotten a little bit more online credibility, street cred, as you could say. And what the return on investment has been is I've seen a growth in income. So are you guys ready to learn on how to do some of this stuff? I'm just going to make the assumption that you could type into the uh, question window. Yeah, man, it's it's really great. Um, did <laughs> There is a question Chuck said is, uh, did you create the new LinkedIn profile because of the big changes? And the answer to that is absolutely. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So what's changed? Well, there's a lot. There's a lot that's changed. And that's one of the things that you have to think about as you look at your LinkedIn profile. If you have not logged in recently, there's a lot of things that are different in different places. And the average person is going in there going, man, I don't get it. This interface doesn't make sense to me. Things aren't where they were. But if you learn how to do these things, you're going to have a leg up on your competition because you're going to have a better opportunity to make the right connections. And that's what we're here to talk about today. So Microsoft bought LinkedIn at the end of last year, okay? It was December 28th, and it closed the deal for roughly $26 billion to buy this professional networking site. And it's it basically was the largest acquisition in their history. Think about that. Microsoft's largest acquisition ever. And we're talking about a multi, multi-billion dollar company. Now, over the course of time, LinkedIn has been focusing, even before Microsoft bought them, on mobile first because they believe that more people would be using the mobile platform than the desktop. And I'm here to tell you that I think a lot more people use the desktop than they do the mobile because there's so much more information at your fingertips. But the newest features are all being brought out on the mobile side, and a lot of that is slowly being ported to the desktop. So I watched how... They're putting all of this new stuff inside of the mobile, and slowly but surely, they're rolling that out to the desktop. Well, if you haven't gotten the new interface by now, I'd be surprised because pretty much everybody has gotten it. And I actually wrote this presentation after I got the new desktop interface because I wanted to see how would it affect you know, me using it and also teaching other people how to use it. Well, one of the reasons why they're making all these changes is because there's a pressure to make money, all right? I have a great blog post that I, I'm not going to post for you today, but if you go to b2b-im.com, oh, yeah, by the way, I forgot to tell you, take out a pen and paper. I'm going to give you a lot of stuff to write down and go take a look at. But basically, it's an article about the history of social media, and it talks about um, the uh, you know the early area, the Renaissance, and then... Um, the, I can't remember what the last one was, but there are three different periods of social media. Social media basically was, this is where art started. Um, and it was, okay, there's Facebook, there's MySpace, there was no LinkedIn or Twitter. Um, that's where it all started, where people were connecting with people. And then it kind of expanded into, hey, guess what? Now you can add business and brand pages. And that was super, super cool. So you could add your business, you could add your brand. And all of a sudden, when you posted things online and Facebook, it would show up in news feeds and people were following it and getting in all of that stuff. And then eventually it turned into modern art. And modern art is this. You got to pay to play. If you post things on your Facebook business page, the chances of it showing up in somebody's new news feed is slim to none. Why? Because they want you to pay for it. They want you to boost it, which I don't recommend, or they want you to basically buy advertising and start selling things that would direct people back to your business page. Well, the same things happened in Twitter and the same things happened in LinkedIn. All right. So there's a lot of things in LinkedIn 
that used to be included in the free account that have been slowly taken away. And we're going to talk about some of those things. So Sales Navigator is the place where you will find them. And Sales Navigator costs about $79 a month or $778 or $79.88 a year. Um, and the question becomes, is it worth paying for? Well, again, for $79 a month, if you get three to five new clients at $1,000, is it worth it? Yeah, absolutely. You know, that's the key is if you can get a return on the investment, especially in that proportion, you know, spend 100, make 1,000. Yeah, I'd do it all day long. Spend 100, make 3,000, 5,000. Yeah, absolutely. So you have to think about, you know, is it worth doing? And I'm not saying go just jump in and get Sales Navigator today. I'm just saying you have to really think about, can I use this as a business tool the way it's been intended? All right. So what I'm going to do is give you a handful of truths and kind of guide you through the process of some of the things you have to think about when using LinkedIn. So the first one is mobile is first, desktop is second, meaning that there's more on your mobile than there is on your desktop. That doesn't necessarily mean you have to go use mobile to get the most out of it. And if you want Sales Navigator on your mobile, you actually have a separate program. So there's actually two downloads. Uh, so you'll have regular LinkedIn, you'll have Sales Navigator as two separate programs. They're not integrated into one. So when you go to your mobile platform, uh, there's, you know, basically you can click on me. On the bottom right hand side, you will see there's a little thing called me. OK, so if you click on me, what it's going to do, it's going to take you to your mobile profile. Now, I want you to take a look at the graphic at the top. That's the background image. That background image is optimized to mobile, but you have to kind of modify it so that it looks good on both mobile and on your desktop, all right? And so there's five main options at the bottom now, okay? When you look at the bottom, you have home, my network, which is your connections, messaging, which is direct messages to you or messages you send other people, notifications, people that have liked, commented, shared your stuff, or people that are having birthdays, yeah, LinkedIn's trying to be a little bit like uh, Facebook, but, um, you know, wishing people a happy birthday and talking about uh, work anniversaries is something that they did so that you wish them a happy birthday. You say congrats so that they get an email saying that somebody has interacted with you so that they log into LinkedIn more. All right. And one of the things you have to know about LinkedIn is the amount of people that uh, time that people spend on LinkedIn is about three to five hours per month, all right? That's the average user, but you can increase that by creating great content and wishing people a happy birthday is nice. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, wishing them happy anniversary is nice, um, but it's really not creating a connection. It's not really creating a relationship. It's just saying, hey, acknowledge you. And then finally, jobs which I'm assuming everybody on here is not necessarily looking for a job. <laughs> They're looking to grow their business using LinkedIn. So at the bottom, you can see that, but there at the top, you have this gear. All right, what the gear is, that's how you manage the settings of your account. So the one thing you can do on me mobile that you cannot do on the regular Facebook right now is change your feed preferences. So you can go in and actually say, I only want to see feed preferences from this particular topic. In my case, it would be marketing and advertising. I don't want to see things political. I don't want to see things about HR. So that's one of the things that you can do on the mobile side that has not been ported, at least to the last time I checked, to the desktop side, but that's coming, I'm assuming because they've already done it on the mobile, they'll do that. So you can kind of modify your feed a little bit better. Uh, and as I said, all of this stuff is slowly being ported to the desktop. The next truth is what have we gained with the new LinkedIn profile, okay? Well, the first thing that we've gained is a new sleeker profile. So this is the current profile. And I want you to notice that across the top, remember when I said notice the um, the graphic that was optimized for the mobile. Okay, you can see it cuts off my book to the left, it cuts off my face to the right, and I really had to tweak where I put that author speaker online strategist so you could actually read it where it wasn't covered by 
the gray bar with basically an ad that they have up there. So that's one of the things that you have to look at is going in and tweaking that so that it works on both mobile and desktop. Then to the left below that, you see there's my picture, there's my name, and then there's my quote unquote headline. I call it a headline. I don't call it a title because a lot of people will say CEO of such and such company. That doesn't mean anything to anybody. What's most important is what problem do you solve for people? Because that's going to get them to read more. All right. So I'm an author, speaker, speaker and social online marketing strategist. And I show you why and teach you how. It says that I'm in Chicago. And then you can see right below that, that is basically my summary. It says, Brian helps small to mid-sized businesses connect with their perfect customers to generate more sales. He's an internationally recognized best-selling author, online strategist. So what I'm doing is I'm putting text right there that's basically going to tease them into clicking see more. That's what you want to do is you want to make sure that you're putting the most important stuff. What problems do you solve? Why would somebody want to connect with you? What do you have to offer them? It's not about you. It's about them. So you really have to think about that content because you don't get a lot to play with. You get two lines, right? Below that, you see I have an all-star profile. Thank you very much. Um, and uh, who's viewed my profile and 57 views of my shares. And then if you scroll down, there's a whole bunch of other stuff in there, including uh, all the posts that I've done, all the articles I've done, my work history, a ton of other stuff. OK, so this is the new one over to the right hand side is I can add a new profile section. I can edit my public profile and we'll talk about if you scroll down a little bit, that's where your contact information is, where other people can find you. Here's the old profile so you can see it. All right. So and if you look across the top. And I'll go into that here in a second so you can see it. Um, you've got home profile, my network, learning, jobs, and interests. And at the very top of that, you will see something that says advanced. That means advanced search. So you can get in and do advanced searches. That's the old way. And this happens to be the messaging app. Uh, you know, so somebody was sending me a message and they're saying, um, you know, Blah, blah, blah. Doesn't really matter. But that is the old profile versus the new one. The new profile is very much like the mobile side of things. OK, uh, so you can see you have home, my network, jobs, mess messaging, notification, and then finally me. OK, so if I click on me. I can get to my profile. So that's one of the ways. So that's all you have now. And if you notice, interests is gone. And interest is where a lot of things that um, used to be um, used as far as uh, following people and things like that, they've kind of melded it into one. We'll talk a little bit more about that. All right. As I said, on the far right hand side, and this is on the even though it's on the left, guys, um, if you scroll down below your connections, you will see contact and personal info. And if you click the pencil button, it will allow you to edit that info. All right. So it used to be that the info was right in your profile. Now it's been moved to a place that's over to the right and down a little bit. It's a little harder to find. Um, so that's what you want to look for is when you're looking for somebody's contact info, look over in the right hand column, go down a little bit. And one of the things that I want to talk about is when you're putting in your URLs. So an example here is I've got b2b-im.com, which is my main website, my Facebook page, not about you, about my books. Um, if you choose website, it's just going to say website. If you choose other, you can actually put a title on there. So I can say the B2B website and blog, Facebook business page, Bacon Book. Um, I could put in my phone number, and that's my work phone number. And I could put in my address, which I don't want because I don't want salesmen showing up at my door because I work from home. Um, so, you know, that's where you put in all of the personal contact info. Make sure you fill that out so people want to get hold of you, they can, especially if they want to follow you. The other thing that's brand new is there's a new company profile. It used to be the companies were kind of like fallen by the wayside. Um, there wasn't a lot of information that you could put in there. There wasn't a lot you can do. And actually, LinkedIn has really pumped up the company side of things. And it's a lot more um, uh, expressive in the information that you can put in there. There's a lot more detail that you can add to it. And so there's... Uh, that's something that you need to look at is your own company page 
And uh, it says there are two connections in mine. It's uh, me and Bev, who has aligned herself with my company, who happens to be my VA, who does all of my email marketing out of England. Um, so she is somebody that um, just added herself to my page, which is totally cool. I mean, I don't mind if all my VAs jump on and do that because um, it makes my company look bigger. But you want to make sure that you go in and look at your business page and see what information you could add. I don't have time to go into all the specifics, um, but that is new. They've really added a, um, a little bit of an uptick on what you can do in your business pages because before they took away products and services and it was really kind of just a black. Now at least it has a little bit of information that you can add and you can add articles and do a whole bunch more with it. Truth number three, what have you lost? Um, well, a lot. And uh, this is from the old profile to the new profile. Probably the most important thing that we've lost is the ability to do an advanced search. All right. So I can put in the word podcast and I could look at top people, jobs, posts, um, all of those kind of things and groups and schools. So that's it literally is kind of limiting you to those things. And of course, you can search first level, second level, third level people. Um, but that's what it's giving you is just these things. So I can search people, jobs, posts, companies, but it doesn't give you a lot of options. And there's a reason for that. It's now been moved to Sales Navigator. So you get a basic search in the free one. You get advanced searched in Sales Navigator. The other thing that we've lost is the ability to share to groups. It used to be that you could post something on your wall, quote unquote, um, which was, I'm going to post an article here or anything or, you know, whatever I wanted to post. It's not an article, but it's a post within the wall. Um, and I used to be able to share it to groups. Now I can only share it to my feed or I can send it as a message. And there's probably a reason why they did that because people were spamming the crap out of groups. And it used to be, and I loved it because I was one of those people that wasn't spamming if I wrote an article about something specific about social media, I would go into all of my groups that had anything to do about social media, and I would basically share that to multiple groups at a time. So it's a little bit more time consuming now because what you have to do is you have to go in and basically copy and paste to each individual group that you want to share with. It makes it a little harder to get your information out there, but it certainly has cut down on the spam. The other thing that we've lost is the ability to reorganize our profiles. We used to be able to say, I want volunteer experience above education because my education is, I have a degree in electronics. Um, I worked in a recording studio and video. And so I had an advanced degree, well, associate's degree in electronics so that I could be a better technician for audio and video. And that's what I wanted to do. Okay, my obviously my business is changed quite a bit. I've authored four books. I'm now a teacher, adjunct professor. And, uh, you know, I help people basically strategize and build their businesses using online networking. I don't have a degree in that, but I do have 35 years in the business. And I've got a lot of experience and worked with thousands of clients. I mean, I've built over a thousand websites, um, worked with a lot of individual coaching clients and things like that, but I don't have a degree about it. So, you know, it's not that I don't want to say that, but I'd rather put things that are more relevant above it right now, like that uh, I'm the past president, actually, of the Batavia Chamber of Commerce. So that, I think, has more relevance, but I can't move it anymore. It's just they put the order in. You can't change it. It is what it is. The other thing is with recommendations. I used to love the ability to say, OK, I want to go into because you can get recommendations for anything in your business. I have even though I have one profile, I have three what I consider to be current jobs. Um, I'm a keynote speaker, so that's one. So I can get recommendations specifically for that. Um, I'm a author, speaker, coach, which I can get recommendations for that. And I can get recommendations for B2B Interactive Marketing, which is the company that I'm working for. So I can get different recommendations for each one of those. And I used to be able to go in and say, OK, I want these three recommendations to be at the top of my recommendation. It can't do it anymore. And I honestly don't know why they put these in in the order that they did, because I have had these are the top two 
And you can see it's July 15, 2015 and March 24, 2014. And I've since gotten some really great recommendations, but they pick and choose which ones to put up there. No rhyme, no reason, and I can't reorder them. So that just, uh, there's nothing you can do. Um, you just, if somebody wants to see the recommendations under a specific job, I, I believe there's a tab that you can get at that stuff. The other thing that we have lost is the ability to tag connections. Um, you used to be able to go in and say, uh, and, and as a matter of fact, let me tell you guys, I paid a virtual assistant to go through my entire account. I sent her my entire QuickBooks list of customers and I had her go through and tag every single client that was a connection. And I paid her quite a bit of money to do that. And guess what? It's all gone. <laughs> it's gone. I can't access it anymore. Um, so, and the reason they did that, because again, that is something that is available on Sales Navigator. So if you want to tag people, get Sales Navigator. Um, but again, you know, if you just want to use the regular, you just can't do that. So you can still search for people and you can kind of narrow them down and search by whatever, but, uh, it just doesn't give you the ability to take a group of people who are, you know, whatever your focus is, maybe you're looking for sales managers, maybe you're looking for product buyers, maybe you're looking for, uh, realtors, whatever your specific thing that you're looking for. Um, you can't go in there and tag it unless you get into the more advanced stuff. The other thing that's changed too recently is articles versus Pulse. They bought Pulse, meaning they LinkedIn. Um, it's got to be two, three years ago at least. Um, I think they bought it in 2013. I'm not 100% sure I was not able to find the history of that. Pulse was a interactive article marketing system that allowed you when you posted something if it had relevance, there was actually a team at LinkedIn that would say, you know what, this is a really great article to be included into a, um, a subset of uh, marketing and advertising. I had one client used Pulse that wrote articles about his business. It was barcode testing. And he was able to get a lot of his articles to the top of something about transportation and logistics which just grew his business like crazy. And we'll talk about him a little later, but that's it's a strategy that worked really, really well. Now we do no, no longer have Pulse, we just have articles. But they're starting to kind of bring back a little bit more of the um, you know categorization. It's not quite what Pulse was, because Pulse had, you can go look at articles just on marketing and advertising or transportation, transportation or logistics, leadership, sales and marketing, whatever it is. Um, so that's gone. So it's still, is it worth writing articles? Absolutely. Um, are you going to get as much traction on it? No, because when I wrote a couple of articles that were pulled into our, uh, marketing and advertising, I was getting thousands of people uh, liking, commenting, sharing views, all that kind of stuff. And now when I post articles, it's in the tens. Uh, and that's when I have a really good article. Sometimes it's two, three, four, or five. Um, so, you know, it just, it's not getting as much visibility, uh, but that doesn't necessarily mean you just stop doing it. It's just different. And back to, uh, I think it was Gene's question about um, touching on groups. Okay, so groups have changed as well. All right. So groups, if you want to find groups, you can scroll all the way down to the bottom of your profile and you will see interests. It doesn't say groups, it now says interests. It's a lot harder to find, and it lumps all of those things together. Now, um, so I can click see all, and then it breaks it down into this. You can see that there's four categories across the top. Influencers, companies, groups, and schools, all right? And so I can click on groups, and I can see all the groups. But again, I can't control order. It doesn't make a lot of sense. I mean, one has 800,000, one has 1.9 million. Um, so it looks like the most active groups are at the top. That's what I'm making an assumption. They don't really tell you. And it can be a little bit harder to find um, to see all your interests. Now, groups has been added. If you look over on the, I think there's a, a, a call out on this. If you go to work now, groups is now under work. So this is something relatively new that's happened in the last few weeks. So if you click on work, you can get directly to your groups. 
from that, which is right next to the me profile, which makes it a lot easier uh, to find. And so you can just click on both of those and boom, you get to your groups, right? Um, post for pages has changed a little bit. This is, uh, so when you're looking at just your news feed, on the left-hand side, you're gonna see who's viewed your profile and then views of your posts. So if you click on that, uh, it will take you to another page. And that is, you can see all of the posts are basically your activity, or you can see your articles across the top. So you can click and choose one of those, or you can see all your activity. And then on the right-hand side, you will see a drop-down menu. It says interest companies. And then further down the line, you will see uh, groups, which is a little further down. And again, it shows you the top groups and it looks like it follows exactly along with uh, what was in the groups tab as far as what was there. So those are all the ways that you can see groups. And then of course, if you click on see all your groups, you can go back in and see all of the groups you belong to. There's no real order, but um, you can get to, if you click on groups in the um, workflow, it brings up even another screen, all right? And so now I have the ability, and this is the thing that you'll notice is that there's some screens that look different and some of it's a blend of the old and the new. And so I'm sure a lot of this stuff is evolving and changing as we go along. So you can see my groups. If I click on my groups, it'll bring up just the groups that I am managing, okay? So that's the next thing it does. So there's Batavia Chamber of Commerce, Marketing Your Small Business Online. These are all the groups that I manage, and then I can go to, um, you know, look at the groups that I don't necessarily manage that I belong to. So those are the two different things that you can do is kind of narrow it down to the ones that you're running and the ones that you belong to. So truth number five, we keep talking about Sales Navigator. Um, do you need to pay? Well, that really depends. I mean, if you're going to see a return on that investment, then yes. Um, I've been on Sales Navigator for a while. I know a lot of people that have been on Sales Navigator. Um, they have had it for a while. They've also been grandfathered into um, the advanced or basically um, it's kind of LinkedIn Plus. Uh, so they've, been, they've gotten in there. But Sales Navigator is a tool that allows you to dig a lot deeper into advanced search tagging, um, setting up potential um, contacts, referral sources, and those kind of things. I don't have time to dig into the whole Sales Navigator. I could do a whole hour just on that. Um, but as you can see, they have four different things they sell, hire, um, attract talent, market, market. That's kind of like their light version of Sales Navigator. Sell is Sales Navigator and learn. They bought lynda.com, which is a whole bunch of training videos on a whole bunch of different topics. So um, you could pick and choose to buy just one of those. Um, but when you go to Sales Navigator, for example, when you look at that, um, there's three different levels. And there's professional team and enterprise. So I can view, see who's viewed my profile for the last 90 days. That's one of the biggest differences is without Sales Navigator, it's going to tell you this person viewed it, somebody in this industry, uh, and they won't show a picture or connection trying to sell you to get into Sales Navigator. In mail, you can in mail uh, somebody, you know, 20 a month on the professional team and enterprise are, are something completely different. Obviously, if you've got a group of people, you're paying per seat. Uh, extended access, advanced sales specific search tools, which is advanced search, um, lead and account recommendations, territory preferences, job change alerts, prospects, notes and tags, learning center. So you do get learning center included in that price. And then the dedicated mobile app, as I said before, which is a specific mobile app for Sales Navigator. These are their numbers, not mine. Uh, but they say that using Sales Navigator, social selling leaders create 45% more opportunities, 51% um, more likely to reach quota and um, outsell their peers who don't use social media. Okay. So I remember a while ago when I said that, you know, people that are using LinkedIn on a regular basis and understand how it works and understand all of the tools and kind of the nooks and crannies, but also more importantly, have a strategy on how to use it right, are seeing great results. 
And that is, and part of that strategy is knowing who to connect with, what to do when you connect with them, and how to get them great information, build relationships. Because one of the biggest problems that I end up seeing is that a lot of people will use Sales Navigator as a way to replace the cold call. And you do not want to try to replace the cold call on social media because social media is all about relationships. So here's Sales Navigator. So for example, and this is a strategy that I use, is one of the first thing that I did, and I've only I connected to these three leads, but the first thing that I did is I went in and I looked at the, you know, let's say I wanted to connect with sales managers, all right, people that are in the sales industry. I went to people that were my first connections, and I found everybody who was a first connection in the sales manager industry, and I hit them up with a message, and I can go to them and say, hey, dude, what's happening? Jeff and me golf all the time. I know, Bill, we've networked a bunch of time. Kim is on a board with me. These are people I can actually go in and start conversations with on a completely different level. It's the second and third level people that takes longer to build. But so, you know, part of the strategy is connecting with those first level people first and knowing what to tell them and knowing how to connect with them and then getting them to respond in a way that's going to help you connect up in, in something that's going to turn into a referral or a sale. And Jeff and I actually got on the phone and I told Jeff about, you know, my upcoming class. And he went, dude, that is the most excellent idea I've ever heard. I so want to be in it. And I could see so many opportunities for me to connect you up with people that can use what you're doing. So, I mean, that's what I want is, I, you know, I want him to be able to connect me with people that could potentially sell my services. And we've already got that relationship established. Second level takes a little bit more time. Third level is way harder. But you, if you get the strategy down and you know how to do it, you'll be amazed at how fast you'll be able to get those connections that turn into sales that will change your perspective, change your status, and change your life. So here's the deal is changes will continue. Every time I log in, something's different. Every time I do this webinar, something is different. And so what I said at the very, very beginning is I call myself a professional student. I spend hours every single week learning this stuff so I can teach people how to do it and how to get the return on investment. So if you guys want to learn more about how to do that, I'd like your permission to tell you about it, and then I'll get to the Q&A. All right? And this is something that I've created called LinkedIn leveraging LinkedIn for sales. So it's actually, it's based on something called my Bacon System book. If you just go to Bacon Coach forward slash LinkedIn, you'll get to a page that describe everything that's in there, but I'm going to give you a broad brush overview. But it's a new coach, coaching and class, meaning that um, not only do you get a training class on how to do it, but you get one-on-one -on -one handheld, get it done for you uh, services that are going to help you make the most of this right off the bat. And I'll explain how all that works. Now, I just wrote a book last year called The Bacon System, Sizzling Hot Recipes That Grow Your Business. That is a 12-week class that goes step by step by step and shows people how to build an online marketing system. It's not just how to use social media. It's how to use websites, Google Analytics, content marketing, email marketing. I mean, a ton of stuff. But it really lays it out step by step. And that particular thing comes with one-on-one -on -one coaching as well that helps people to get things done, set things up right, so they start to see a return on their investment. Now, the new bacon system for LinkedIn, which is leveraging LinkedIn for sales, is a six-week course, all right? So it's six weeks. It's online group coaching. You get the online training. So this is the way it works. It is for an hour, and when the group starts, which is going to be starting next week, um, and I do this every, I repeat it just about every six weeks. I take a week off in between. And so what it starts out with is online training. You get a half hour of solid online training of specifics of how to master this. Then you get a spotlight session. I limit each class to six people. That means one per week can get a spotlight session. So we could talk about their profile. We can talk strategy. We can talk uh, connections, how to use sales navigator, whatever it is that they want. And then we have an open mastermind. And most of the people in this group are in the sales industry. 
and they want to you know basically talk about ideas and the last class that i did there were so many great connections um, that people actually got together and found ways to help them make better connections to actually sell more products which has already reaped benefits sales and a huge return on investment for them and then we have an open q a so i mean it's that mastermind where somebody says you know i'm trying to figure out how to do this and somebody else will come in and say well you, let me tell you what's worked for me i've gone into linkedin and i posted this kind of content into this group and then as people have liked it, then I've gone in and talked to that specific person in a direct message. And there's ways to do that with Sales Navigator that you can't do with other things. And that shows them how to actually access people in groups that are engaging with your content. And so now it turns into a warm lead. And now you're starting to build relationships with those second and third level connections, which is basically building for the future. So that's what it is. It's a, it's basically an hour can go longer if need be. If there's you know enough people that want to stick around, I don't stop it right at the top of the hour. But it's it's the online training, the spotlight sessions, so that somebody gets their questions answered, mastermind, and then Q and A. And these are the six sections that are in there. So the first one is navigating the new LinkedIn. It's really digging in deep and showing you step by step all the nooks and crannies of where things are at. And I update this every time because every time I do the class, it's changed. Um, polishing your profile. Huge. How to create a profile that's going to get you noticed. Because as I said, people don't spend a lot of time in LinkedIn. So if people get to your profile, is there something there that's going to spark their interest? And I'll show you how to do it really simple. And I can do it for you. That's the other thing, too, is I can work through it with you. I can do it for you. It doesn't matter. That's part of the coaching. You get to post great content, and that's, like I said, post something into a group. can be your stuff, can be somebody else's stuff, but if people are interacting with it, that basically becomes your relationship arsenal. The next thing is then making quality connections. So how do we connect up with people who are either going to buy from you or refer you? And using groups, how to use groups as uh, additional research to create great connections and then finally, advanced tools and techniques, which is digging into Sales Navigator. And you can decide at that point after you've gone through that last section, session, is it worth spending the $70 a month or $780 or $800 a year? Um, for me, it's already paid off. I mean, I've already made enough connections that it's paid for itself three times over plus, And that's only within you know, the last month. OK. Um, cause I, I use the free sales navigator and now I'm starting to really dig into it and I've learned a ton and it works great. So in the class too, the one thing I want you to know is that if for some reason you can't make a class, everything's recorded, you get it for months. Um, you will have access to this for months and only you can see it. So only the people in the class can see this. This is not wide open so that, cause this is a mastermind. This is what happens in the room, stays in the room between us. So you get the training, you get the full Q&A, which is another video. So there's two videos in there. If you want to watch just the training, you can do that. I turn the training into an audio so you can listen to it like a podcast. You get all of the slides. So you can go through the slides if you want to. And there's homework every single week. So you can learn and go through and start doing the homework to start building that perfect profile. Make sure that everything clicks into gear for you. Question everybody asks me, it doesn't work. Okay, so this is John. John has been a client of mine for three years. He was actually the impetus for building the Bacon system. And he went through all of that stuff step by step with me. And we heard about the LinkedIn class. He says, dude, I've got to get into this class. And so from this, uh, he was posting things to his LinkedIn profile, but connected it to Twitter at the same time. And he, he basically sent me this thing. He said, dude, I got an update from Twitter. Somebody was following me um, and it was a client I sold equipment. He said, the light bulb started going on in my opinionated head. He says, I honestly get it. He since has been making great connections using the things that I trained him on, not only in the Bacon system, but more importantly, he's really taken to what I've taught him in the LinkedIn system and has seen his profits just skyrocket. As a matter of fact, through the things I've trained him, he's been able to double his income. Now, granted, it took a year, but he was able to double his income. We're not talking, you know, 10,000, 20,000. We're talking six figures to much bigger six figures. Um, so he's, you know, he's really enjoyed it and learned a lot from it. And he's living proof that this stuff does work.
So again, I ask you, you know, what's a customer worth? Um, what would happen if you had three to five new customers a month? And if you did this every single month, because when the training's over, it doesn't stop you from keep using it over and over and over again. And so that's the thing. So if you really want to learn more about it and start to make some more money, then I suggest you go to Bacon Coach forward slash LinkedIn. Now, everybody asks, what does it cost? OK, well, the Bacon system itself is twenty five hundred for the enterprise level and fifteen hundred for the solopreneurs. This class is worth twenty five hundred dollars. The two coaching calls alone that you get, one is basically it's a profile overview that you and me go through your profile and your entire LinkedIn account and clean it up. The second one is usually done at the end of the class where we go through and strategize how you can better utilize the things that you've learned, whether you get Sales Navigator or not. So you get two one-on-one -on -one sessions. That alone is worth over $500. But you still get all the training and you get the replays and you get to use that. For a limited time, this class is selling for $1,000. But for a limited time for the second class, because this is the second one, I'm going to keep the original price that I did, which is $497. All right. So it's a one time commitment, $497. If after 30 days you don't feel like you're getting your money's worth, I will refund 100% of it. You get 100% money back guarantee. Nobody's ever taken advantage of it. Trust me. So. Bottom line is, you got any more questions as we go through this, go to askbrian.com at b2b-im.com. Send me an email. I'd be happy to set up a 15-minute one-on-one call with you and answer any questions and show you around the system and give you, you know, basically kind of do a house tour and, you know, make sure it's right for you. Because the bottom line is, if you're not going to get that return on investment, I'm not here to take your money. I'm here to help you make money. That's what I do. That's the entire goal of my business is to help people improve their bottom lines, improve their lifestyles, and get you to a place where you never thought you could be. So at this point, I want to open it up for questions. And I'm going to go look through the questions that we have here. Um, and John says, I cannot stay at the end, but it looks like an interesting webinar. Thank you, John. Uh, did you create new LinkedIn profile because of the big changes? Chuck, I already answered that yes. Um, so. With all the new Razzle Dazzle, why do I get email notifications? So this is Kent. Let me read that. Uh, with all the new Razzle Dazzle, why do I get email notifications on specific connection invitations that I can't find on my LinkedIn site to save my life? Um, just one example of something basic that never used to happen. Um, if you're getting a LinkedIn connection, it usually is going to be under my connections and there should be those new connections sitting at the top. Um, I could probably show you, I know I get them all the time and basically you can pick and choose. Now, one of the things that I do on that Kent is I actually go in and look at the connection. I don't just accept every connection because a lot of people are coming in trying to sell me stuff. No, I don't mind you know people selling me stuff, but not from India, uh, not from Pakistan because those are low-end web designers that are trying to come in and sell me stuff that I don't want or need. So I always make sure, I always ask myself this question, can I help them make good connections and can they help me make good connections? Is there something that maybe we have in common that makes it worthwhile to make that connection? Then I will prove it, otherwise I deny it. So it should be under my connections. You should see a number up there. It'll say one or two at the very top. And if it says one or two, you click on that and that's where your new connection should be. Um, uh, I do need to leave, but thanks for your webinar. I hope I can um, hope send the recording. Yeah, John, I will, um, I will definitely have a recording of this and you can get at it a little later. Okay, Gene asks, uh, Brian, how do you use projects in LinkedIn? I create a project for each webinar podcast and guest to my project. This used to send an update to all my connections. I hope LinkedIn still does this. Gene, the only thing I know how to do with that is um, actually create groups. Because um, I don't see projects anymore as an option, um, as something that you can do. So you can create groups. I know a lot of people will focus on Facebook for this kind of activity, but you can do the same thing inside of LinkedIn, create a private group or a closed group or a hidden group 
and uh, put all the people in there. But that's um, that's the only way I know how to do it. And it says, uh, this used to send an update to all my connections. Um, the You can go in if you decide to post that to your wall and do send to connections. I mean, that's another way to do it. But that's the only way I know how to make that happen is either create a group or just post it on your wall and send it to connections. Um, next one is art. Art says, I keep getting a desktop pop-up. Profile view is not captured, even though my profile is complete. Boy, that one I do not know. Um, I'd actually have to look at that for your art uh, individually, and that would be something. But profile is not captured, is not something I have ever seen. So, and again, you know, it could be, here's the thing. If you're getting a pop-up, um, one of my suggestions is, is try it in a different browser. So if you're using Chrome, go to Firefox. If you're on a Mac, go to Safari. Um, I'm not a big fan of Internet Exploder, which is Internet Explorer, because that tends to eat things up. But if you're on Chrome, go to Firefox. If you're on Firefox, go to Chrome. If you're on Internet Exploder, try Chrome or Firefox. Uh, and see if that pop-up still comes up, because it could just be... Um, a problem with the browser. That's the only thing I could think of off the top of my head. Hopefully that answered the question. Um, but that's just it. I can't find the invitation that would provide a clue to the value of this person. The other thing it might be, Kent, it could be spam. It's a, it could just totally be spam. And unless, and this is something you need to investigate, at one time, you might have had two LinkedIn accounts, and it's actually sending you invites from a different LinkedIn account. That's another possibility. I know people that have multiple LinkedIn accounts with different emails. So check that out. Maybe spam, maybe connected to a different account, but that's the only way I could see that happening because I've never seen that as of this point. Uh, can we make our photos square again? Uh, no, they are not square. They're round um, in there. So, but it is a square photo <laughs> that is basically put into a round circle. Um, so no, you cannot make your photo square again. They automatically format it to the circle because it's part of the new interface. And Art says, uh, thanks, I'll try it on Firefox. Good, let me know how that works, man. Um, send me a message in LinkedIn and let me know. Hopefully you guys, all of you in this will connect up with me. Um, and Avi says, thanks for giving this webinar. Hey, you're very, very welcome. So again, um, you know, I'd really like you guys to consider um, thinking about jumping on board and, and seeing if this, um, and I, I just kind of, uh, let me go back to that slide so I can do this and hit play. Uh, so, uh, you know, I'd love to have you guys on board. I have room for six. I've got one sold. I got five to go. If you're in, jump on board. Like I say, 30-day money-back guarantee. Um, the people that have taken the class, and these are advanced people. These are not people that are just like newbies to LinkedIn. We're blown away. They loved it. They got a lot out of it. They got the value. And I asked them flat out. I said, did you feel like it was a good value? And they both said, oh, just amazing. Um, and uh, then the other people that I had in there were some people that monitored a couple of the classes and things like that. So I got room for six. I got one sold. Uh, five left. If you guys want to jump on board, feel free. If you have any questions, uh, go to askbrian.com, as I said before. Um, and let me go back to that one. No, oh, I'm just moving. I'm just bouncing around here. There we go. Go to Ask Brian. Send me an email. Um, and uh, I'd be happy to spend 15 minutes discussing it with you if it makes sense. Um, so hopefully you've learned something. Hopefully you get some value from this. We are at our hour. And as I say, I honor you, I honor your time, um, and I really look forward to staying connected with you guys in the future and providing some more good info. I will continue to do these LinkedIn webinars as I start to see more changes. So keep an eye out for those. Um, they will not all be exactly the same thing in the future. So feel free to jump back in. So if you guys got any other questions, you can email me at askbrian at b2b-im.com. And as I said before, one last time, go to BaconCoach.com forward slash LinkedIn. Join us for the next class. It starts next week. Um, it has been at Monday at 1 o'clock, the same time as this. Um, and I'm hoping to keep it at that time. But I always take a poll of the class to see what's the best time to try to get everybody involved. 
if for some reason we set up a time you can't make it, I'd be happy to refund your money. Or if you just want to watch the replays, you still get that one-on-one -on -one coaching, which is the most valuable part of everything that I teach. So guys, thank you so much. I look forward to um, everything. And uh, thank you, Phil, for inviting a bunch of friends. Uh, man, I always try to, uh, you know, under promise and over deliver. So uh, I really appreciate it, brother. All right. So if you guys don't have any further questions, I will let you go move about the country. Enjoy the rest of your Monday. Get outside. It's gorgeous if you're in the Chicagoland area. And I guess it's really nice in Alberta as well. So um, have yourselves a great day. Look forward to talking to you soon. Thanks, guys. Take care.